uh, we're gonna do another fencing video this is uh, this one's a little different this is the electric fence um, so as you can see we're starting to string this wire with the, the clips on it so I'll show you how to put the clips on and we're putting this fence in for for cattle we have a steer that keeps going through getting over with our neighbors now you, as you can see our neighbor's fence is not cut out for cattle it's just pure net and our cows just run right through that so that's kind of why we're going with the so just snap these on the t post where you want the wire they just snap right around in between these two whatever height you want and usually what I do is I like to keep this tight and wrap that just so it stays tight. You can even go further apart than this on your T-post. And uh, we went a little closer because of the two stairs. But you can go, you could probably go in between, leave out the middle post and be fine. All the cows need to do is you can get a sense. They need to touch it once and then they're, they know not to do that. That way if you wrap it, it stays nice and tight so it's doesn't come loose. Okay, so we're at the end here. We got this other electric wire tied off right here. Cut that off. I like to use this wire, the actual for electric fence. It's a string to give it strength and it's wrapped with uh, wire. And so you get your strength and plus you get your electric, your electrical. There's been spots in here where we had to tie it and splice it together, as you can see, but it works, it works great. You can actually use a piece of bob wire and energize it if you want, as long as you got it insulated from the pole, so. The main things you need to learn about electric, you need to know about electric fence, you got to have a good ground or else you're not going to work. This can go up to 20. This electric fence has a, I got a battery and it's plugged into the AC and the AC and then it goes DC charger, which charges the battery. And so your batteries are never going to die as long as you got the AC power, but you can get the solar ones. They work pretty good. And, but like this one, it can go up to 20 miles. And you just want to tie this off into a knot. Like I usually do some half hitches or some, just so it's not gonna come undone. And make sure you don't have no tails. There's a half hitch. Another half hitch. And then cut your tails off here so it don't touch nothing. Nice thing about this wire too, you can just cut it with a pair of linemans or a knife and you'll be good. So. Another thing you want to remember is if you're doing a double circuit like this and you're going to have a wire down here, make sure you trim the weeds because even the slightest weed touching your your electric fence will short it out and it could kill your battery just like that it keeps doing it so you want to make sure you don't have any tall weeds like we had some of these taller weeds we just went through and we whacked this whole section of fence to make sure that none of it was going to come in contact with the electric fence another thing you want to remember is anything any way that this is going to go to ground uh, you want to make sure if it's touching the dirt or if it's touching the fence post, a metal fence post going to ground, it's going to short it out and it's not going to work. 
you want to keep it totally isolated um, from any source of ground whatsoever. Uh, on your side where you got your control, you want to make sure you got a good ground rod. I got, I think I have two ground rods pounded in, uh, one right next to it, and then one just further feet away to give it good ground. Especially if your soil is real dry, you want to be careful that way. So, because that's the way it returns back to the source is through the ground. So it just makes this a complete circle. So, okay, I'm gonna put this insulator right here. There's different kind of insulators you can get. This one's what they call a, well, actually a house knob insulator. And they just screw right into the pole and they work pretty good. There's different types you can clamp down onto a T-post. So. One thing you want to remember too is uh, sometimes it depends on the T-post, sometimes these don't pop right on. So sometimes you can just carry a little flat blade screwdriver and just get it in there and then just pop it around and it should uh, clamp right on there. You can stick it right between these two. They're supposed to go in there and slide like this. But uh, with cattle, I've had them come off. Uh, especially if you get a lot of wind. A lot of wind and it gets a little sloppy. It can just blow this right off. Uh, so sometimes you can either take a pull it tight, do a half hitch. And then you get stay tight and it's not going to go nowhere. Uh, this is also a cheap alternative if you want to section off parcels of your property. Uh, so you don't have to put a permanent fence in. Um, a good, quick, easy way to do it. Because uh, fence fencing can get really expensive. Then if you only want a temporary, like this is only going to be a temporary till we got this, till we get ready to sell these steers to the sale. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take this down. It's gonna be easy to pop out with a T post popper and take this fence somewhere else. What we're doing here is we're gonna take a best if you can just use a copper wire because it's the best conductor you can probably get. So we're just going to take it from this fence, or this wire that goes this way, that's keeping these cattle from pushing on this fence. And we're tagging it into this, to this, and all you got to do is wrap it. And then we're going to take a piece to go from here to here, and wrap it, and that should energize that all the way clear to the end of the fence. And we should be good to go once we get that tied in. Okay, so here's the finished product here. Your circuit's coming from this hot wire. It'll go through here, tie it into this one, it's going down. and So it's gonna energize, it's gonna energize both of these wires as it's going down once we turn the controller on. We got both ends isolated. In between and the middle is all isolated. We should be good. No weeds, nothing. They're all on insulators, so we should be good. And your controller will tell you that. And so we'll head over to the controller. Okay. So now we come over here to the controller. What we have here is you got your, this is your negative going up to here, your controller. It does do 15 miles, I told you wrong. It said 10, I didn't know if it done 10 or 20, but. Um, so you wanna make sure this the green knob is your ground. It's going down. It's only going down into this ground rod here. I only got one ground rod here because this, this soil gets irrigated. It stays pretty moist back down through here. And so it's not, and then I got my garden right here, so it stays moist. One ground rod is good enough. Make sure this is tied good into your ground, most important thing. And then this right here goes over to your electric fence. So I got electric fence going to the north and electric fence going to the, to the south, which the south is gonna tie onto that, all that new built that we did. So on the batteries here, what I have is, uh, I got two, these are actually 12 volt batteries. They look like a six, but they're actually 12 volt. And they're impellel. 
Then I have an AC coming from a plug over there. And this is a charger to keep these batteries charged. And then, so what you do is you stand away from that wire unless you want to check it. I'm not checking it. So you put your negative on first. And your red's always your positive. Can you hear that little tick? That means your fence is working. Touch it, Dad. I need to touch it. <laughs> and so you should be good. Uh, this is the best setup that I found if you have an AC circuit charging it. That, unless you got a solar. They got these solar ones that are. Um, we also have one of those which they work really well. So, but yeah, and then if you want to make sure that it's actually working, just go ahead and lick your fingers and just grab that. No, you gotta do the weed touch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's all I have for electric fence. If you guys have any, uh, go ahead and check out our other uh, videos on the Desert Ranch here in Utah. And, uh, and uh, we'll be doing some more videos in the future. I got some dancer, putting dancers in and also tightening wire without a fence stretcher. Uh, we'll be posting, so uh, go ahead, keep that in mind. And thank you for uh, going on the trip with us here at the Desert Ranch. Thanks.